Before I get into today's Nippa Tasty Booze, I want to take a minute and talk about this guy. This is my grandpa Milt, and he left us about a month ago. Now I appreciate anyone's condolences, but I'm very much at peace about how he passed. First, he was 97. Second, I got lots of quality time with him at the very end. And third, he lived a very full life. He fathered five children, had 14 grandchildren, I think, and had who knows how many great-grandchildren. He served in the Navy in World War II and the Korean War, and at the very end, I'm told, had two girlfriends. He had had a stroke a week and change earlier, after which he could no longer swallow, but in spite of not being able to eat or drink, he still lasted over twice as long as his doctors predicted. In short, he was a fighter, a badass, the genuine article, but I never had a drink with him because he was a notorious teetotaler. So why didn't he drink? Well, he told me that he didn't like the effect that alcohol was having on his life, so one night before bed he prayed to have the desire to drink taken away, and when he woke up the next morning, it was gone, and he never drank ever again. Seriously. I mean, I wasn't there, but he had a reputation for not making things up. Which is why one of the most shocking memories I have of him was about 10 years ago, around the time my grandmother passed. I was about three months into my first full-time restaurant gig when he said, Bartending? That's cool. I used to keep a pint of old Overholt in the glove box of my 39 Plymouth in case any of my friends wanted a pull while we were driving around town. Now when he said this, I had one of the biggest moments of cognitive dissonance of my adult life. My non-drinking grandfather was talking about a bottle we kept in the well at my restaurant. If someone ordered a rye old fashioned, they got old overholt. And here he was telling me he kept it in his glove box. In this car. Ever since then, I wanted to have a drink with him, but I knew that would never happen. So today, in honor of his passing, I'm tasting old overholt bonded. Whether he would approve of this, I have no idea, but he has been watching my videos since the very beginning, so he didn't hate booze that much. For all I know, he only watched because I had a picture of him and my grandmother on my desk in my early videos, but who knows. Anywho, a lot of bartenders think of old overholt as the workhorse rye, which it is, or rather was. It doesn't taste as good as I remember it tasting. I mean, I have nothing to back this up, but I feel like they changed the recipe about 10 years ago. But at 25 bucks a bottle, there's no reason this can't permanently take its place. It smells real good. More or less what you'd expect from an American whiskey, but a lot less honey and vanilla than you would get with a bourbon. I do get a slight note of sweet cherry. Yeah, it smells great. For a rye, this does have more corn flavor than I was expecting. I do detect less sweetness than I do with most bourbons, and the characteristic spiciness of rye is also there. Does it match up to my memory of old Overholt from back in the day? I wish I could tell you. And after it's had time to open up in the glass, the spice is more prominent. Now some may disagree with me on this, but I think the saddest thing you can do to an old fashioned is make it with 80 proof whiskey. I just think that to stand up to the sugar and bitters you need something at least 100 proof, which means this very much wants to be put into an old fashioned. I'll be right back. I'll be right back! <laughs> just regular Angostura in this, there's nothing really special about it, unless you count the fact that I made it. Also, there's some discussion within the bar world about how to garnish an old fashioned. Personally, I prefer an orange twist for bourbon and orange and lemon for rye. Cheers. And that's more or less exactly what I want an old fashioned to be. I am going to double down on the importance of doing both orange and lemon twist for a rye old fashioned. I mean, feel free to do both for bourbon, but for me, I'll just take an orange twist on that one. Thank you. But yeah, this is not too sweet. The bitters and the whiskey balance out perfectly. This is a spectacular drink and one I could easily see myself drinking three in a row of. So yeah, cheers to my grandpa Melt and uh, cheers to you. If you're still watching, it means you made it to the end of my little novel. Thank you. One last thing. This isn't the only bottle of new ish rye on the market. If you'd like to see a video about another one, click right here. Turn camera. Two, take one.